untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. This footage was recorded during the streamer event for Wilds of Eldraine, so thanks again to Wizards for having me. And today I'm presenting this Red Black or Rakdos Rolls deck, which features a lot of new cards from Wilds of Eldraine, one of the main build arounds being Spiteful Hexmage, a 1 mana 3-2. Seems a bit overpowered, but it does come with an interesting drawback. When it enters a battlefield, create a cursed roll token attached to target creature you control. So if we play Hexmage on turn 1, it's our only creature that we can enchant with a cursed roll, which is the only negative roll, which turns a creature into a base, power and toughness 1-1. One, one. So essentially just end up with a 1 mana 1-1. One, one. But as it turns out, there's plenty of ways to either sacrifice the cursed roll for value, or we can also replace a cursed roll with a different one, such as the wicked roll provided by many of our cards, such as Lord Skitter's Blessing, which we can already play on turn 2. Wicked roll gives plus one plus one, and when this aura is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life, and that includes sacrificing the wicked roll itself, or the creature going to the graveyard, in which case the aura also ends up in our graveyard. So let's say we go turn 1 Hex Mage, turn 2 Lord Skitter's Blessing, Wicked Roll goes on our Hex Mage, and now instead of a 1-1, one, one, we all of a sudden have a 4-3, since it's back to a 3-2, getting a plus 1 plus 1 on top of that, so we can attack for 4 damage, and Lord Skitter's Blessing is essentially a cheaper Phyrexian Arena, as long as we control an enchanted creature, so we get to draw an extra card at the cost of 1 life each turn. And with all these different roll tokens, it's pretty easy to enable Lord Skitter's Blessing in this deck. Besides the Blessing, we can also play a turn 2 Charming Scoundrel to maybe replace the Cursed Roll with a Wicked Roll. We can also decide to make a Treasure Token or discard a card and then draw a card. Scoundrel itself also has Haste, so we can also just play it as a 2-2 with Haste that also deals one extra damage when it dies thanks to the Wicked Roll. So a very flexible 2-drop. And then we also have four copies of Twisted Fealty, which is a Wicked Roll token stapled onto an Act of Treason effect, which is already powerful in any aggressive strategy, getting to remove a blocker, attack with it, and push extra damage while generating a Wicked Roll on top of that seems awesome. But we also have a few ways of sacrificing the opponent's creature after stealing it, and those include Annihilating Glare as an additional cost to cast it, either pay four mana or sacrifice an artifact or creature, Got a couple blood tokens from Epicure and from Harvester we could sacrifice to enable it, but we can also sacrifice the opponent's creature after stealing it with Twisted Fealty and basically take out two of the opponent's creatures no matter how large they are. And then we can also combine a Fealty with Braid's Arisen Nightmare, which is another all-star in this deck. A 3-3, saying at the beginning of our end step we may sacrifice an artifact, creature, enchantment, land or planeswalker. If we do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with it, and then for each opponent who doesn't, that player loses two life and we draw a card. So let's say the opponent doesn't have any enchantments in play, we control Hex Mage with a Cursed Roll, we can now sacrifice that Cursed Roll to Braid's, deal the opponent 2 damage and draw a card, and we got rid of our cursed roll, so now we have a 3-2 hex mage. Could also sacrifice a wicked roll to braid, which will deal an extra point of damage on top of the 2 damage from braids, since the wicked roll goes to the graveyard, so that can also potentially burn the opponent out if they're low enough. And of course Braids is awesome with Fealty since we can steal an opposing creature and then end of turn before giving it back we can sacrifice it to Braids and likely deal some more damage on top of that. So as you can tell Braids has a lot going on in this deck. And then I haven't even mentioned scenarios where you play Hex Mage, play a second copy and then put the Cursed Roll on the same Hex Mage that already had one. So we're left with still a 1-1 Hex Mage and then a 3-2 Hex Mage. And then we can maybe remove the remaining Cursed Roll to some of our bargain effects. If we don't have a Braid, then we might have Torch the Tower, which can bargain, sacrifice a token, artifact or enchantment to deal 3 damage and scry 1, as opposed to just dealing 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker, exiling it in the process. And then we also have two copies of Back for Seconds, which can also bargain to now get back a creature with mana value for less from the graveyard and put it straight onto the battlefield, in addition to getting back a second creature. Otherwise it's just three mana, get two creatures back into our hand, and that can also be nice in those grindier matchups. And then of course we can also sacrifice the various blood tokens from Epicure and Harvester to enable those bargain synergies. 
So yeah, there are a ton of synergies throughout the deck, and it's easy to miss some of them, so hopefully the gameplay will showcase what the deck is capable of. And then a mana base, just 22 lands, keeping the curve relatively low, since we top out at 3 mana, and then just a lot of red-black dual lands for mana fixing, so we can curve out smoothly. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This is unfortunately a mulligan. This we can keep. So we've got turn two Scoundrel. Probably turn three Braids. Can uh, ditch bank for seconds and then hope that Twisted Fealty can combine with Braids. Lord Skitter's Blessing could also come in handy. Opponent to red-green. And for now we'll run out Scoundrel. And Wicked Roll's reasonable treasure is as well. Let's go with the Wicked Roll. Attack for two. Next turn Braids. Could sacrifice the enchantment. Opponent with the Huntsman's Redemption. Okay. So play Braids and then sacrifice enchantment. Our opponent could do the same if they want. But we get to draw. Opponent loses one. And then Glare could be a decent answer here to a larger creature. Opponent goes digging, finding the tortoise, which we can take out. And in fact, I probably want to sacrifice it to fealty, that way we also get to attack with the tortoise and ramp. And then Wicked Roll can go on Charming Scoundrel. And end of turn, Sacrifice Tortoise. Not bad, still have a torch available. And triple Blessing in hand as well. Six mana, we're in Gruff Triplets territory. Awaken the Woods for four instead. Yeah, I'll kill one of them now. And then we can Blessing on Braids, turn it into a 4-4. Four, four. And then Scoundrel on Braids attack. They're gonna double block and jump. And then end of turn, could sacrifice the Wicked Roll, so that's 3 damage total. And then next turn we could do it again. And uh, pass the turn. Another Tortoise, that's fine. Could also channel Abandoned Mire, get back Scoundrel. I see opponents playing a combo deck, Draconic Destiny, Tortoise and... Um, a creature lands could potentially uh, set up kind of an infinite loop. Since Tortoise gives a one mana discount, if they enchant a land with Destiny, they can use the one mana fire breathing ability for free. So that's infinite extra power, but it does take a little bit of setup. So Scoundrel 2-2. Two, two. Our opponent did gain a life of Riveteer's Overlooks so that are actually not that to the Braids plus a Wicked Roll, and they could also sacrifice their own Wicked Roll, of course. Can sacrifice the artifacts from Harvester with a Glare to kill something. And found another Scoundrel anyway. So yeah, let's say we go Harvester. 
Take out Scoundrel so they don't have an enchantment to sacrifice. Can play Scoundrel putting Wicked Roll on Braids itself. And then Glare kills Scoundrel. Sacking an artifact. They drain us for one. Can attack with Braids and Scoundrel. Either way, one damage gets through. And then sacrifice enchantments, which is also Wicked Roll, so that drains for three total. And that should be game. Alright, so finally managed to drain the opponent to death here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn one Hex Mage, turn two Blessing, hopefully. Facing red black. So far, so good. Make that Mardu. And a Scrapwork Mutt, so a Graveyard Combo deck. And yeah, it's the Cavalry Variety, a deck we featured recently. So what's next? Probably Lord Skitter's Blessing. I don't think the opponent's likely to play a lot of interaction. I would like to exile the Mutts at some point with Torch so they can get it back, but for now we gotta get the pressure going. Attack for four. And then Blessing draws us an extra card. So dealing with the opponent's cheap creatures and tokens can make their cavalry a lot less impactful. Wedding announcements also make sense. Can make tokens for the various bargain synergies. Don't have double red, so we can't Harvester plus, let's say, Epicure or Torch. Um, we can, however, cast a Braids if we'd like. Although there's nothing I really want to sacrifice. Or we could go Harvester plus a Glare. Sacking the Blood token, which could be reasonable. So in that case, I probably kill the 1-1. One -one. So we can torch the mutt so it doesn't come back. And then next turn hope to draw a red source so we can maybe fealty get a nice hidden still torch. Could have also waited to glare until we steal the opponent's creature with fealty to get uh, two creatures out of the way. Definitely a lot of ways we can sequence. Scoundrel can help them discard and draw or make a token. It's gonna discard and draw. And they've got the haste enabler, so if they get to five mana for conquests, they can bring back cavalry plus Recruiter, but no lands. That's a big deal. We also failed to draw a land, so we're on the same page. Okay, now what? Can Fealty steal, let's say, Scrapwork Mutt, Counter on Harvester, Attack All Out. That uses up all my mana, at least. And then we can eventually look to close out the game with Braids, sacking the Wicked Roll token. Just gotta keep up the pressure. We do see a triple block. Makes cavalry a little bit less threatening. Bone falls to four, down to three. So now Braid's sacking Wicked means they'll have to sack an enchantment to survive. Four mana, so they're one away from conquest. And they get another token. Still no land. Okay, so... Torch, Scrapwork Mutt, attack, forcing a chum block. And then... Yeah, if our opponent's got any instant speed token maker, we're still in trouble. If I play Braids, sacking the Wicked Roll... That's not enough, since they can sacrifice Festivity. 
What if I go Scoundrel, make a treasure? Does that make a difference? Then I can still Torch Mutt, attack all out, and get one damage in. I guess that's still the best I can do. But I've got a feeling we're gonna get comboed next turn. And if they go Cavalry plus Recruiter, that's still multiple creatures. Virtue of Loyalty can also make a Surprise Blocker now. So our opponent falls to one. Which is not zero. And they've got enough in play to win with Conquest if they have it. Otherwise Epicure can win us the game next turn. So, five mana conquest. Alright, opponent's digging, so they didn't have it yet. So now Epicure just wins the game. Recruiter just to get in some haste damage. Take seven. But that's not enough. Yeah, very close one. Being stuck on three lands this entire time was surprising, but her opponent also never got to five for Lich Knight's Conquest. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Hex Mage into turn two Blessing. Could be a great start. Turn one, Elusive Otter, so a more aggressive blue-green deck. Okay. Possible our opponent's got a few bounce spells, so I may not want to commit Blessing on turn two. Virtue of Loyalty triggers Prowess. Alright, I think I'm still intrigued here by the Blessing. Bit of an all-in move. But it does let us attack for four. And have an enchanted creature. Can still play a scoundrel to present another one. Sentinel's fine. Just a 3-4 here. And I guess they can buy back their virtue so they can make another token. Get to draw a few cards. Don't have any removal, sadly. But I can uh, play Harvester to let it maybe take out a Sentinel next turn. Could also go Scoundrel, make a Treasure plus Harvester, but I might want to keep this for the Wicked Roll. And Gala Greeter is also worth taking out. Their opponent can make another knight at instant speed. Sentinel hits for three. Alright, and a fealty. Don't have a sacrifice effect to go with it. Probably just scoundrel plus harvester. Now I can take out Sentinel if I'd like. This 5-mana uh, Virtue is also going to be scary, adding plus 1 counters to the whole team. But for now, kill Sentinel. And then Scoundrel with a Wicked Roll. Don't think I have a great attack with a Hex Mage. Although if it trades for two of the opponent's creatures, maybe that's fine in this spot. Because we want to mitigate the damage of Virtue of Loyalty. They can enable Prowess on the Otter. Trade Otter plus a Knight. 
or a Gala Greeters. That works. Still have an enchanted creature. Bones at 11. And we can line up some blocks. Still no sacrifice effects to combine with our fealty. Can still take out a knight with harvester. And then what if I do just fealty here, steal a knight, can still play scoundrel alongside it. So yeah, still tempted to fealty here anyways. And then sack harvester, kill the knight. Drain for one with a wicked roll, play another scoundrel with a wicked roll. Smash. Get her opponent to three. Another sentinel could exile my graveyard, making him back for seconds worse. And a bramble familiar, opponent's on empty at least. Okay, now double Epicure just closes out to game, so that's convenient. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got the curve of Hex Mage into Blessing. And then Braids with double Fealty could be exciting, so I'll give it a shot. If our opponent's packing lots of removal, this hand may not work out. Smash for four. At least it's out of uh, cut down range. Get to draw an extra card, that's excellent. And I could play Epicure plus another Blessing as opposed to playing Braids. Better in the face of a counter spell. Which is probably what they're holding at this point. Could be a flash creature. And then with two different enchanted creatures, we can draw two cards even in the face of a single removal spell. Opponent had a fairy vandal, didn't quite line up. All right, fairy fencing now, killing hex mage. If they've got another removal spell on Epicure, we're in trouble. But they don't back up hex mage. And a glare also quite good here. So we've got options. Braids likely gets countered. Still play hex mage. Step one, probably just attack with Epicure. Because Fealty is good with both Glare and Braids. So if they counter Braids and play another creature next turn, we just steal one. And then end up killing both, basically. Which works for me. Alright, opponent still only has a one creature in play. But we're also drawing three cards per turn. Can uh, play Epicure. Opponent's at seven. Our opponent might be trying to set up an ambush here, but we can easily get back some creatures from the graveyard with our bargain, so don't really mind. Mastermind. And Fairy Vandal. 
Okay. Okay. So damage happens, and then back for a second, sacking a blood token. Could be the move. Or we can just fealty steal one of the vandals, put counter on Epicure so we can keep drawing, and then glare. Kill vandal, sacking vandal. And then back for seconds, can get back braids. Get in, get out. Easy. I know something you don't know. And draw a couple more cards. So let's do this now. Keep uh, a bit more black man available. Braids in play, maybe Epicure in hand. Although, could see the advantage of Hexmage. Play Hexmage. Can put the curse on Braids, which is good enough by itself. And then attack for two. End of turn, sacrifice the cursed roll. Which drains the opponent for two. And then next turn, sacking an enchantment with braids is game over. Erta is gonna kill braids. Or maybe Epicure to stop the card draw. I'll probably sack a blood token, discard springs at this point. But Fealty can just steal Ertai, or we can just play Epicure now that our opponent's down to one from the Wicked roll. So a couple ways we can end the game here. But yeah, an unanswered Lord Skitter's Blessing early on definitely carried us to victory. Okay, we're on the play with a Fine Hand. Turn 1 Epicure, turn 2 Scoundrel. If we draw untapped black mana, we could Blessing on two as well. Scoundrel it is. And I don't think it matters where we put the Wicked Roll. And Gala Greeters, we can Torch. And then Blessing, Wicked Roll on Scoundrel, so we've got two enchanted creatures ready to draw. So a nice start. Hopefully we can keep it up. Don't have an answer lined up for Shield Roots, so that's always a concern. Rutstein makes a token, so that was a good hit. But so is Braids and Annihilating Glare. So we can Glare Rutstein. Or we can just kind of sit back for a turn. Keep Glare for a potential Shield Root. Although our opponent may not be running Shield Root, maybe more of a self mill deck. In which case it's fine to kill Rutstein, keep up the pressure, play Harvester. And then sacrificing these Wicked Rolls with Braids could deal 3 damage each. Another Rutstein, okay. Pun is also playing a Lich Knight's Conquest. Trying to reanimate multiple creatures. Scoundrel and the land, so we can play both. And let's see, do we have any great attacks? Yeah, I think I still attack with everyone. Could also put a Wicked Roll on Harvester. Set attacks past Old Rutstein. Attack all out. 
And we'll see how they block. So this has our opponent taking six, and then braids should be lethal. Sacrifice an enchantment, and that game. This was a brutal curve out draw. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands could use maybe some more uh, synergies with the Hex Mage. Can eventually sacrifice the Curse Roll to bargain, but don't have anything to return from the graveyard right now. Fealty, I guess, could also replace Curse Roll with Wicked Roll. But uh, yeah. Early Hex Mage is still nice to have. And we can sort of cancel out one Hex Mage with the other by putting Curse Roll on the same one. And Bunny Corn, okay, so green white tokens, sort of. So we can take that out before it does too much more damage. And uh, I guess we'll offer the trade. What I can do is cast Torch with Bargain, sacking the Cursed Roll now, kill Bunnycorn. Seems worth it. Alright, so we ended up with two Hex Mages without any drawbacks. Even get to scry one in the process. Don't think I need another Fealty. I'll take a Braids off the top. Wedding announcements to be expected. Harvester's not bad. And with uh, back for seconds in hands, we don't mind making some trades. Another bunny corn we can potentially steal. Could also use the blood token to go digging. But let's just take our turn for now. Okay, Blessing. So if I steal Bunnycorn, attack all out. Putting a Wicked Roll on, let's say, the Hex Mage. That seems powerful. Even if I can't sacrifice anything. Could use Harvester, kill one of the tokens so they can block Hex Mage, but at that point I might as well attack all out. We're kind of forcing them to jump Bunny Corn. Still take six. And now it's not quite as threatening. Seal from existence, can exile my Hex Mage. Now goes for Harvester. With Blessing we'll have two enchanted creatures, so I'm more likely to keep drawing. And a Pollen Shield Hair to get in for four. Okay. They get another token, bump the team. So yeah, could still be an uphill battle. Now we get to double spell Scoundrel and Blessing. No creatures in Graveyard at the moment. So everyone gets a Wicked Roll. So if I attack with everyone, then our opponent will end up losing the Bunny Corn because they also have to block with a human. So that should work out. And our opponent falls to two. And if my two creatures die, we can just drain them to death with uh, a wicked roll. So we can just turn the team sideways. Although we could also just go with hasty scoundrel plus epicure. Alright, not bad. 
So those early hex mages put in some work. Awesome. So yeah, we got to see our Haraktos roll deck in action. And uh, the deck can still go through a few more iterations. There's definitely a lot of new cards to play with. We could add some cards from the mono red deck, we could play around with more sacrifice effects, or we could introduce even more roll cards. So there's a couple different directions to take the deck in, but the core of Hex Mage with Lord Skitter's Blessing, Scoundrel, and then Braids seems like a very nice package. So I'm excited to see where this deck will end up. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.